So I've now had a chance to read the draft for public comment for Amendment 3 to the 18th edition. Um, you can log in and uh, read the amendment on the BSI website and leave a comment if you want to. Um, I've now had a chance, I was going to make a video earlier in the week, but uh, I think there was a delay um, putting the... Uh, putting the, the proposed changes on the, on the website. So I've now had a chance to read this. Um, and so just to recap, the the changes are, first of all, in definitions, we've now got a defin definition for bi-directional protective device and unidirectional protective device. And then in part five, there's a new regulation which says selection and erection of equipment for protection, isolation, switching, control, and monitoring shall take account of all possible directions of power flow where bi-directional power flow is possible, only a suitable device for bi-directional power flow shall be used. And then there's a note below that that says, product standards as listed in, amendment, uh, in Appendix 1 for RCCBs, RCBOs, circuit breakers and AFDDs require these devices to be marked to indicate if they are unidirectional. So in other words, if you were to look in the existing standard for, say, BSCN 61009 for RCBOs, it, it already requires the manufacturers to mark the devices to show if they're unidirectional. Um, so, so that's interesting. And the thing that my first thought was, is, is there a standard symbol for this? Or is it, is it a choice of a different symbols that they could use. I, I, I don't think there's any kind of standard symbol at all, um, but I may be wrong. Um, but I think that there's a, there's a couple of different ways that they mark, mark it on the device, either with arrows or, or they might label it as in and out. The other thing that I was wondering is where on the device is it marked? I saw on one video that the markings were on the side of the protected device. And I think it'd be really helpful if in future if they were on the front of the protected devices so that we could see them easy when it comes to uh, doing an ERCR. So, just to recap the origin of this, it was announced a, uh, a week or so ago um, that following a, a report by Beamer, who are the Manufacturers Association, I believe, um, basically the concern is that where unidirectional protective devices are used, if the power flows in both directions, which as is the case with a PV installation, for example, that would mean that the RCD protection would not operate. So now um, this new amendment is going to change that and it says that where uh, bi-directional power flow is possible, only a device suitable for bi-directional power flow shall be used. So that's quite an interesting change. Um, it's, it's, um, and it's, it makes sense, really. Um, but there's a few questions that I've got in my mind following this amendment. The first one is about the marking on it. I, I really think it would be good if there was a standard marking, but I don't think that there is. Um, the second question that I've got is how is this going to affect how we approach doing EICRs, so electrical insulation condition reports, when we're doing electrical testing, I mean, we've already got to look to see what type of RCD has been used, so type AC, type A, and so on. But we talked about that, obviously, after the uh, Amendment 2. But now we're going to have to look, if we've got, um, a, say, a prosumer installation and you've got um, you've got PVs, maybe battery charging, maybe electric vehicle, uh, electric vehicle charging, where the power could flow in both directions, we're going to have to check if the devices are bi-directional. And one thing that I'm wondering is, how will this affect how we do the codes on the ICR? Now, I've mentioned before that when it comes to wiring regulations and amendments to them, the, the, the new um, regulations are not meant to be applied retrospectively. So I've mentioned this in previous videos that when I personally do an ICR, if I come across something that's a new regulation, I would give that a code three. However, when looking at this, the concern that I have is that if you've got RCD protection that's intended for fault protection, not just additional protection, but fault protection, that would not work if the device was unidirectional. So let's say you've got a TT system, you've got RCD protection that's, that's your um, method of, of protecting against electric shock. If you go and do an EICR and you find that those are unidirectional, so and, and you, in other words, you can see that they would not operate, the, the RCD would not operate in the event of a fault because you've got current flowing both ways. How would you code that? I, I, I would think that you would want to give that more than a code three, I mean, because it's, it's a big problem. If, if you go to an installation and you find that the, the main method of uh, protection against electric shock is not working. Um, so I would be interested to see, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know the answer to this question. And I hope that there'll be some guidance that comes uh, from the industry um, 
on, on this is how do we approach carrying out EICRs specifically if you've got RCD protection that's intended for fault protection, so protection against electric shock, such as in a TC system, how would you code that if you find that that device is unidirectional um, and you believe that it wouldn't work in the event of a fault because you've got power flowing in both directions if there's, say, solar PV or battery or electric vehicle connected to it? That's that's a concern. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how we would approach that, and I hope that there'll be some guidance. I'm sure there will. There'll probably be. I'm, I, I don't think that I'm the only person that's thought of this, so I'm sure there'll be some, uh, um, be some comments on that um, from, from the industry. The other thing that I was thinking is, when it comes to the make and manufacturer of protective devices, do all the electrical manufacturers make both unidirectional and bidirectional protective devices? I'm not sure if they do. I, I, I don't know the answer to this question at all, but it just occurs to me that you could find yourself in a situation where you go out to do a job, you need to find a, a replacement breaker, replacement RCBO, for example, um, and you go there and you find that you can't get the right breaker for the existing consumer unit. And I think that every electrician has already had this problem. You go to a job and you know you need a breaker and you can't get, you can't get it, may, maybe because they just don't make them anymore. But also, could we have the same problem as a result of, you know, which manufacturer made the consumer unit? Um, I mean, if they don't all make bi-directional devices, what do we do? Do we end up changing consumer units as a result of this? So, so that's the other question that I, I, I had in my mind following this. Um, but yeah, I've noticed that there's quite a few quite a few people have put comments on there that are similar to, uh, to my thoughts on this. So hopefully... Hopefully we'll get some answers. What do you think? What do you think about the changes in the proposed Amendment 3 to the 18th edition? Let me know in the comments below.